Imagine your child waking up one morning and they seem completely different. This is not a gradual change. Their language may seem different. The way they are talking is different. They're mentioning fears. They're choosing not to eat. They are raging with anger. Their anxiety is out of control. They may be doing a lot of tics. They may even be having some psychotic symptoms, seeing things, hearing things that aren't even there. It may look like full-blown OCD all in one night. These personality changes can change in an instant. Let's talk about pandas. No, 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 not that kind of panda. You may or may not have heard of this before, but pandas, are you ready for this? Stands for Pediatric Autoimmune Neuropsychiatric Disorders Associated with Streptococcal Infections. Say that five times fast. Hi, my name is Nathan Peterson. I am a licensed clinical social worker. I have created step-by-step -step online courses for OCD and hair pulling and skin picking disorders. I create videos every single week. They're gonna help you with your anxiety or OCD type symptoms. So pandas, this occurs when the strep virus triggers a misdirected immune response. You're probably like, what in the world did he just say? But it results in inflammation in the child's brain. So neurologists believe that it affects the basal ganglia of the brain. A clinical diagnosis of pandas is defined by the following criteria. The presence of significant obsessions, compulsions, and or tics. Abrupt onset of symptoms, kind of like we talked about earlier. This needs to happen before puberty. There is an association with the strep infection. Obviously, the strep virus is very common and many children get it. But this doesn't mean that they automatically have pandas. When looking for strep, did you know that it can actually occur and reside in your body in other places? Places like your ears, your gut, your sinuses. So when individuals get this throat swab, which is usually where the strep virus exists, it may have been missed. It has been said that a majority of strep infections actually are missed. Individuals may do blood work to see the amount of titers. What does that mean? An elevated strep titer means that the child has had the strep infection for some time within the past few months, and his or her body has created these antibodies to fight the strep bacteria. Some children create lots of antibodies and have very high titers, up to like 2,000, while others kind of like in the medium range of that elevation. One of the most common diagnostic tools that I have seen individuals use is called the Cunningham panel. This tests the likelihood of the child having pandas, that inflammation in the brain. So here's the dealio. I get a lot of emails and phone calls regarding pandas, and the conversation usually starts out like this. Do you believe that pandas even exist? Such an interesting question. People ask this because there's a lot of information out there, doctors, people they've talked to who say like, pandas doesn't exist. While I'm not a medical doctor, I am a licensed professional that has seen many individuals come through my office who exhibit these sudden onset OCD symptoms and tics, sometimes mixed with this rage or this anger, sometimes mixed with psychosis. And when I mean sudden onset, I literally mean that sudden onset, like their child was eating dinner, smiling, happy, great. The next day, they were completely different. How scary and confusing is this for parents? For me, I absolutely believe that pandas exist. According to the research that I've done personally, as well as the cases that I've seen in my office. But what I think is the most important is that not necessarily debating if it exists or not, but taking care of whatever the symptoms are. Because what I see is that with individuals who are going through this, you go through what's called a flare where symptoms may increase, which can take up to five to six weeks, sometimes longer, but they gradually die out. You kind of think of this flare of like the inflammation in the brain, there's gonna be more symptoms. This is typically where they're exposed to other viruses or even the strep virus in their body is elevated. This is a pattern that individuals may go through time and time and time again. Just like we know with anxiety, those symptoms go up, they go down, they go up, they go down. But typically, these infections dictate the need of an antibiotic, something like penicillin. This seems to be the first choice that I see a lot of doctors use, and it has been studied. I wouldn't believe it unless I've seen it myself with my own eyes, but when individuals start taking that antibiotic, 
their symptoms start decreasing. What a coincidence. <laughs> the treatment that we're working on tends to be much better. When they're going through that flare, treatment just doesn't seem to work very well. When they're doing these medical treatments, man, treatment starts to soar for the individual if they're willing to do it. Some individuals may do what's called IVIG. It essentially is an IV that gets injected and it can reset the immune system. These are donated by thousands of human donors. And what typically gets injected is what's called immunoglobulin. And I may have totally butchered that name because there's a lot of medical terms when it comes to pandas. So as far as the medical side goes, an individual may see an OCD therapist to take care of some symptoms. We use things like exposure and response prevention to teach their brain to respond completely different to these fears and the anxiety that comes their way. Individuals that experience pandas will have different OCD themes. These can be seen just the same as somebody that has OCD. We can often fit them in one of these themes or categories. So ultimately, what I want you to know out of this whole video is that I want you to get the proper treatment, if possible. What I say is exposure and response prevention for the OCD symptoms, CBIT, C-B-I-T for the tics and Tourette's, and a medical trained professional for the physical body and the brain. I tend to go to the pandasnetwork.org to find a professional. And with everything we just talked about, it literally is like scratching the surface of what pandas actually is. Parents trying to navigate through this, you are not alone. I hope this video was helpful for you. If your child is struggling with OCD type symptoms, please watch some of my other videos because they might relate to what they're going through. So here is my question for you. What do you think about pandas? Have you or someone you know experienced this before? Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time with streptococcal infections. I have a hard time saying that. Start over. Neuropsychiatric. <laughs> you got this, Nate Dog. Psychiatric. Oh, oh, there's a reason this is called pandas. People can't say the name. Neuropsychiatric dis. Oh, wait, that's not it. Psychia psychiatric. Why can't I not say it? Immunoglobin? Glublin. Glublin. And what typically gets injected is called immunoglublin. Gublin. <laughs> A goblin. A goblin. And what typically gets injected is what's. Can you see the remote? Oh, no. Okay. We're good. We're good. And what typically gets injected is called immunoglublin. Globulin. And what typically gets injected is what's called immunoglobulin. Globulin. <laughs> oh, I will get this someday. I will. And what typically gets injected is what's called immunoglobulin. And what typically gets injected is 